Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with the True King Yang Zing deck again. It's definitely a deck that has been in very high uh, demand for people wanting me to play. And the problem is, is that I had one hell of a Christmas break uh, from my channel, and as such, I took a Christmas break from essentially Yu-Gi-Oh! And I haven't touched this deck essentially since the last time I filmed. Now, things have definitely changed. True Kings have gotten access to a Pot of Avarice light card, that can shuffle other copies of itself back, meaning that the True King engine in itself is essentially infinite. Now, what does that mean? That means that essentially this deck can probably take a little bit of a different focus, meaning that you could probably slim down on the number of Yang Zings that are played in this deck, still keeping the paths and probably still keeping the nine pillars in, but slimming down on the Yang Zings as a whole because of the fact that you can access them out of your deck off of of uh, the uh, Draco Phoenix as well as um, as well as the Water True King uh, Bas Barastos Barastos yeah I still don't know their names except for Agnimaz the uh, the Vanisher because I did a card review on him but this one is what Miramune and Lithosazim okay but anyway I think that this deck could definitely change focus a little bit to be have less of its like main deck taken up by Yang Zing cards maybe just play a few key floaters maybe cut Chi Win to two maybe cut Jiao Tu to one. Uh, just slim it down a bit, play two paths maybe, uh, or maybe slim, uh, slim nine branches down to two. Uh, but there's definitely room that could probably be made in the main deck to play uh, just more cards like a third copy of Mare Mare, maybe Terra Tops, maybe Taka Tomborg. There's a couple different options that can be played and the ways that the deck can function and go forth with the addition of a card like this that allows you to essentially make the True King engine infinite, thus meaning that you're able to use the True Kings themselves as your access into the Yang Zings instead of playing such a large Yang Zing count to uh, access the True Kings reliably. But, I mean, that's all just uh, theory and speculation, but like I said, I haven't touched this deck in literally a week and a half since I filmed the last video, and so I'm going to be playing it this time for this video, and we're going to see if my little bits of uh, brushing up on the knowledge base of what I know that I need to do are going to pay off in my favor. Um, and see if it's uh, if it's something that I can remember how to play with the small amounts of changes that I've made to it, like the inclusion of the avarice. But anyway, let's not waste too much time in this portion of the video. Let us just hop straight into the first game and see how uh, things go. All right, so I have no idea what he's playing, uh, but all I know is that I get to go first. Hey, <laughs> I'm, I'm completely okay with this. Um, I'm not okay with this hand unless this desires draws me something really, really good. In the form of like a field spell, that'd be kind of neat. Or just monsters. Like, there's no bad things here at this point. Um, but, so, let's see. I banished all three of the field spell. That's a bit unfortunate. Uh, but I can definitely play without it. Because of the fact that this deck just cycles so well. Um, especially since I just drew monsters. Um, so, yeah, that's problematic, but not the end of the world. Since I have Soul Charge and Yang Zing Path. Like, holy shit. <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's not get too uh, extraneous with our uh, with our hatred of life. I should be able to end with um, with VFD and a few different options. Unless I get max seed here, am I getting max seed? I'm getting max seed. You know what? Fuck it. I don't even give a shit at this point. Do not even care. We're just gonna go into VFD and we're gonna establish a floater, and it's gonna be the end of that. Um, now let's see, I could actually, I could Soul Charge into Dengelong just to make another, I could make three defensive lines, uh, but VFD is really all that you need. That's the thing, this is actually just super resilient in terms of, VFD is the man. Uh, but so what we'll do is we'll summon, uh, I can summon, I can summon Swanee out of deck, get that, get that, nah, I just have to, I just have to do this, I just have to. I just have to go straight into this. It's it's non-negotiable. <laughs> it's, it's really not. Uh, so we're going to summon the Jiao 2, and we're just going to make VFD. Because VFD calling, like, I don't know, Earth? Or Fire? Wind? I don't know what the correct thing to call here is. Probably just Wind. Um, it is probably just Wind, and then I'll be able to use uh, all of my stuff later. Uh, but so from here, he gets to set up a lot of shit, but ultimately, I don't think it's going to matter, because he has so many cards that he's not going to be able to do anything with them. Um, but so from here, yeah. I can fire all of his monsters that are fire monsters naturally have no effects. Um, let's see... Cannot activate effects or... Uh, eh. You know what? We'll just make it fire. You know what? That's, there's no reason not to. 
it literally doesn't matter what you call, uh, because apparently they all become fire when they enter the board. So, uh, so it literally does not matter, and in this case, that means that he won't be able to get Mithrilium effects, um, and stuff like that. So that's going to be the key thing here, is that he won't be able to get Mithrilium effects, he won't be able to do this, he won't be able to do that. And so this is a fire, can't activate its effect. Man, this card is so strong. VFD is such a actual beast. It's literally in the card name. I don't understand how they got their naming so spot on with this card. <laughs> Super premium. Uh, but yeah, so he can't activate the effects of literally anything that he puts on the board because this does change the attribute of them afterwards. Its wording is super ambiguous as to that fact, but it does do that. So, I can't even get Utopia the Lightning here because if he summons Utopia the Lightning, it's a fire and it can't attack. This card is so just anti-play aroundable. You literally can't play around this card. You have to have something like Chalice um, for like the draw phase because anyone that's got any sort of brains is just going to activate it in the draw phase. <laughs> Like, I, 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 I can't understand. This card is so good. But, so he's just gonna pop and set up all of his stuff, and then Pendulum Summon, which I'm fine with. He can have all of that. I will just use VFD, and I will make it whatever attribute I want, and then I'll summon another VFD, and then I'll just keep going with V and F and D. Uh, but, so what I have capable, uh, capable to me in terms of plays is that I have uh, I have the Swanee Engrave, which I can use. Um, I can bring back both of those with Soul Charge, right? And I can use the Swanee and this to go into... Ah, I don't know. I could just Soul Charge uh, for Swanee alone, and uh, and then summon Pulau, and then make Yazi. And then from there, I would be able to... Uh, from there, I'd be able to, um, I'd be able to make uh, Yazi pop uh, one of these cards, probably the counter first, and then it'd float into Mare Mare, and then I'd have three open spots, and I'd be able to go Mare Mare into Denglong into my place. Uh, I'll definitely pop the one that's unknown. 100% um, will pop that one. But so from here, he's going into Alkahist. Okay, and so uh, no, I'm fine with that. So what we'll do is uh, is I'm gonna activate this effect immediately, um, based off whatever attribute I draw. I'm going to uh, I'm if I draw a True King, if I draw an attribute, I'm gonna use VFD to change it to that attribute, so I can just immediately cle immediately clear his two monsters. Um, so that would just be the key thing there. I've got Soul Charge. I can make Path Live. There's just a lot of things going good for me at this point, <laughs> and Juncture in this game. Because he can't activate this now. Um, so, let's see. I drew a nine branches. Um, okay, well. So what I get to do is I can do this now. Just so he can't suck up with uh, with Alkahist. It forces the Alkahist to suck up now. Um, so we'll make fire. We will make fire. Um, so yeah, Alkahist has to suck up right now. Um, and if he sucks up this, hey, I can just you do a Jiaotu play. I don't even need to Soul Charge at the current point in time. So this actually just works out so far in my favor. Um, and it sponsors your opponent controls. And yeah. So what I get to do here is I can actually just immediately Jiao to, And I can uh, I can get rid of one of these. Uh, I can get rid of this Nine Branches. I'm fine with that. Um, yeah, so I'll do that. Depending on what this is. If this is a Strike, then I'm just going to I'm just gonna use Path and then, <laughs> and then Soul Charge. Um, but so, yeah, we'll activate this, and I'm just going to go into Yazi and the Mare Mare. Um, that seems like the most optimum play line, because even if he strikes this, I'll just be able to go Soul Charge, Yazi, Mare Mare, Crystal Wing, you know, that stuff. But so, yeah, what we'll do is we will summon, uh, we'll summon this with zero attack, and we'll summon this with zero defense, and so we're going to do Yazi pop itself to go for Mare Mare, because Mare Mare is my favorite card in this entire deck. Uh, like, no joke. Uh, we'll make a Yazi that's unaffected by traps. And so what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to Yazi um, and pop this. I really don't care about the counter. One card to destroy, two card to destroy. I really don't care about counter, and uh, counter could trigger here for all I care. I'm going to spin cards back to the deck as soon as this gets destroyed. Um, I'm just going to be spinning cards. Oh, it's a combination. Fuck! Damn it! Uh, got my ass. Alright, well then. Huh. 
What a, uh, what a, what a thing. And now the counter activates, so yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, but, uh, so yeah, Mare Mare into three tokens into my stuff. And, uh, and I'll be able to basically get three new cards. I'll be able to get a, uh, a nine branches. I'll be able to get a, uh, draw or two. In fact, yes, two. Definitely two. What am I thinking? Yes, there's definitely two happening. And then I'll be able to soul charge and I'll be able to make, like, double boxia. Yeah. Um, so this is going to be, uh, an incredible feat of, uh, of how, how to clear a board. But, uh, so we searched that. And so monster to summon from deck is definitely Mare Mare. Mare Mare. My man, my man, Mare Mare. And no Maxi in sight, so we're okay with this. So yeah, Mare Mare tokens, I need to definitely watch my time, because I've got a huge amount that I can do during this turn. Um, I've definitely got to watch my time. Because this timer on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro is jank as shit, and it just doesn't add time back like Dev Pro does. Dev Pro, you can keep going indefinitely. As long as you are making plays, you can go almost indefinitely. Uh, but with this, with this, it's not. No, not the case. Not the case at all. And you will find. Um, but so we'll search nine branches because that just seems like the best card to search. Uh, and then we go Stardust Charge Warrior to just get as many cards as possible into our uh, circulation. Uh, I can actually attack with Stardust Charge Warrior into all of these, but uh, that's not going to be what we're doing here. But. Charge Warrior draws Twin Twister, which is amazing, in fact. Jesus Christ, that's so good. That means I get to just out his scale after I spin everything back. Um, wow. <laughs> Come on. Let me let me summon my uh, formula, please. There we go. It, it just literally stopped responding for a second. And I was like, excuse me, please, no. Please, no. Not today. Um, but so this will use this, this will summon, I can actually go into Scarlight too, and wipe the board before I even do anything else. Crystal Wing, not really that big of a, big of a, like, threat here, especially since he's already established. And this just reduces the amount of cards I have to shuffle back with, uh, with, um, with the, uh, what man, with the Boxias, yeah, that one. So this will destroy everything and deal, uh, it will destroy everything but the Babuku. Well, no, it's a, it's effect can't be activated. I don't know, if, I can't remember VFD, does it? It's a, it's effect cannot be activated? Yeah, it's, it's effect cannot be activated. So it definitely, it's continuous effect should definitely still exist. Um, but so there's that. So he takes 500 for each. Uh, that triggers. I can shuffle back. Um, I can shuffle back the, uh, the Dragoons and the Steeler in. Uh, with a Boxia, so what we'll do is we'll use Soul Charge here, and we will use it on uh, on many things, in fact. Uh, so we'll use it on these two, right? And uh, I need... where's Mare Mare? Where the fuck is it? Oh wait, yeah, it can't be summoned by anything except a worm. Uh, so what we have to do here is we have to go with... Uh, with... Jiaotu, Bixie, and Swanee. That's the combination we need because we need it to be we need to shuffle back three cards, and uh, and then I still haven't normal summoned. I don't think. No, I have not. That Jiaotu was still on the board from the previous turn, so I'll then be able to do even more things because of how this is going to be uh, structured. So yeah, these all come to the board. That's fine, and then we'll make a Boxia that has uh, three spins. And this Boxia will uh, spin the Scale, the Full Metal Foes Fusion, and the Dragoons. So I've got a Twin Twister, plus a Nine Branches, which is going to lead me into a Herald of the Arclight. So I can out, theoretically, four Pendulum Scales. Um, rather easy and efficiently. But so we'll activate Path here. Uh, Path will put back Dinglong, it will put back Yazi. And we'll also put back, what card do I want more? I definitely feel like Pulau is definitely needed for like some weird niche, um, like one, one off, uh, like level modding. Okay, well, I've got double Twin Twister. This terraforming is useless, so I'm not even going to worry about that. Uh, but so this can summon back, uh, the, the Mare Mare. Um, this can be normal summoned. 
I can use this, pop this, to make, uh, I can pop the, uh, the fucking thing to get back Mare Mare. Um, and that would, uh, that would give me access into that. I need to make a second Boxia. No, I don't. What am I thinking? I don't need to make a second Boxia. What I do need to do is go ahead and make, um, and make a, uh, a Herald of the Arclight. Um, I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, so I'll make Herald of the Arclight here. This will activate summoning back another Yang Zing to be a floater. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and have that on the ready. And so yeah, we'll just summon Bixie. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, 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 no. Set, 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 set. I can. I'm. I'm trying to set these cards uh, because I can definitely uh, make Herald of the Arclight here. Come on, come on, come on. And then in turn, 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 in turn. Ha. Whoa! <laughs> uh, Alright. So, like, this was a very extensive play line. Um, and I definitely could have made, uh, I actually shuffled back the wrong card with, uh, with the path. I should have left the Pulau engrave. Um, because I was, I definitely knew I needed it for something, but I was thinking of it for the wrong reasons. The play was to use Boxia, right, to pop the Earth True King to summon Pulau back, and then the Earth True King summons back Mare Mare, and that's Boxia number two, which shuffles back the two cards. Um, so that's that's what I was that's the that's the interaction I was missing. Um, but so this negates uh, activation or monster effect. Nah, that negates that. Um, I think I'm okay with that because that just pops this and gets a Momorat, which I mean I get to I get to negate what his monster effect is. So that just that's fine. I'm I'm not gonna negate this card. That's there's no reason to negate this. This is protected by battle. Oh, it actually gives you a little tooltip. It says battle indestructible. I've never noticed that. I don't know why it says fairy light two times, but it, it's indestructible. Oh, that's so cool. Um, I've never ever ever noticed that before. This one says it's trap immune. Yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. I like that. I think that's so cool. Now, I need to know, I need to refresh myself with what card he just added. He added a Gold Driver, and he added a Steeler in, yeah. So he added a Steeler into his hand, he added a Gold Driver off of Bismagear, at least I think that's the, that's the interaction that happened. Uh, so he summoned this, now he can activate its effect, but it's going to get banished. So there's that. Um, now it's not a cost, um, it doesn't have to hit the graveyard either, it doesn't say send the cards to the graveyard. It says discard a card, and if you do, draw a card. Now, it doesn't matter where the card goes, he discarded it. So, there's that. But, oh my god, this is a long-ass game. Uh, this might be a one-game video. <laughs> Just because. It's battle immune, my man. Come on, my mans, you know this. It says it, you got the tooltip. Well, I don't even know if it gives you the tooltip. But it gives me the tooltip. If it gives me the tooltip, I imagine it would give you the tooltip. Um, but yeah, I think this is going to be a one game video because of how long it is. Like, Jesus, we're already at 15 minutes and there's still, like, yet to be a conclusion drawn here. So, uh, yeah, this is probably going to be a one gamer, which is definitely not something I'm, uh, like, objected to. I would definitely like to keep the videos, like, around 20 minutes in length-ish. Just because that means that people are more likely to watch them. Uh, but the fact that this deck is so complex, the turn structure takes literal ages. So uh, that's the biggest thing that you have to work with, is that you have to deal with the fact that your turn structure literally is basically as high as you want to make it. The sky is the limit. It's an incredibly complex deck. So you've got to factor that in. That's something you've got to factor in. Ah. My nose. It's fucking with me. That's another reason it's probably going to be a one uh, game video, is that my nose is getting destroyed by a sinus infection that I have, that I have had for a day, and it is going to keep me out of work tomorrow, which is a bitch, uh, because of the medicine that I'm on makes it to where I cannot uh, operate any of the machinery on the job site, or I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, do different vari variations of things, but, so we're going to use this, we're going to use this here, and I'm going to destroy this and uh, and we'll use the Bixie. I don't want to use the Chi Win, or do I? Yes, I can make Ding Long and add another card to my hand. Yeah! Oh man, both these Twin Twisters are alive. Hell yeah! Okay, so you got to get through double Twin Twister, and um, 
and the and the Herald of the Arc Light. Jesus, man, how are you gonna do it? I don't know how you're going to, but it, once you figure it out, you let me know. Uh, but so we're gonna summon this Dinglong, and this Dinglong's effect is gonna activate, and I'm gonna add just some bullshit Yangzing like Chiwin. Um, I'm not gonna add a card like Path because I definitely don't want to discard Path. 100% extreme dislike. Do not wish to. Do not wish to do this. But double Twin Twister. I feel so safe right now, because he could play another card out of his hand, right, in his scale. I could immediately Twin Twister both of them, that leaves him with four cards. He could play two more cards, I could Twin Twister both of them. If the last two cards in his hand are scales, then I could negate it with Herald of the Arclight. Or even if one of them is a scale, I can negate his Bullhorn to try and search the other scale. I feel so secure right now. <sighs> Cannot express how secure I feel. I feel so secure. I probably am very, very unwarranted in feeling as secure as I do, but I feel so secure. <laughs> uh, cannot express how good I feel about this situation. Because these are going to go away. We got Twin Twister, these two cards. Um, hmm. Let me check the extra deck here. He's got one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and activate this. I feel like that was a card you would definitely have wanted to normal summon. If that was uh, if that was not like your only high scale outside of the stealing that I know is in your hand, um, so once you put down the scales, we'll see what happens here. Okay, Mulmorat. So he's gonna be able to search a low scale, uh, but he's playing against the clock now. So he's got to make his plays super fast, uh, or else he's just gonna lose to the clock. That's the thing. That's the thing I hate about Yu-Gi-Oh, bro. <laughs> I wish we had something like DN. Um, because now he just he's just playing against the clock. Because now I'm not even playing against him anymore. He's playing against this clock. And he's got to make plays, or else he's going to lose. And he's got to end the turn before his before the clock is over. Or else he just... Okay, he's gaining a little bit of time back. Good man. Alright. Hell, shit. It doesn't ever give me time back. Or maybe I just never notice. Uh, but he's got to make plays super quick. You only gain back like two seconds for every move you make. Uh, meaning that you still lose time. So, he's definitely got to, to answer this in some way. So he's summoning that, going into these. I don't even know if he used the bullhorn effect. Um, but Emerald, <laughs> he's just trying. He's trying so hard to search and get his targets and things moving. He's trying. Ugh. He's trying so hard, and I'm not making it any easier for him by, uh, I'm not making it any easier for him by just, uh, by just speed rejecting the response window, because of the fact that me speed rejecting it, uh, just means it immediately goes back to him, in terms of, uh, in terms of activation of effects, and so, if he's not ready for it, then it's gonna get him. Oh, come on! You gotta intern now! Damn, <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Fuck. We're both playing these super complex decks, but he just can't get the timer situation worked out. Shit. Alright, well, I'm gonna keep this and I'm gonna keep it as its own game video because, Jesus, man, I don't know if I can sit here for another 20 minutes of this and I don't know if anyone else is going to either. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about the video as per usual. Uh, there's a link to a straw poll that I'm still having going on in the uh, description. There's a link to it for how you think I should handle these uh, live commentary games in the future. Uh, should I do a Patreon where I have a certain like pledge thing that's a relatively low amount, um, but that gives you access to a private Discord server where you can talk to me, talk amongst each other, and also just uh, schedule times to record with me, because I'll be going in there and be like, I would like to record this, this. That will definitely increase my video production by a ton, meaning that I will increase the amount of videos that go out and stuff like that. Should I just live stream? And, uh, and try to record live that's going to chug for my computer, but it might be able to work. Um, or should I just, uh, like, basically cultivate a group of, like, 10-plus people that I know that, uh, that would be able to record. Basically, that's, like, a, a, a different version to the Patreon thing. But there's a straw poll in the description um, to uh, kind of set that going. And should I just start a Patreon in general? If you think I should start a Patreon in general to help uh, crowdfunding and stuff and help, like, fund my channel since YouTube's algorithms have gone to shit... Um, then, uh, then definitely, uh, put your input there as well. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below of anything I just said at the end of the video. If you like this video, definitely be sure to like, and if you're new here, definitely consider subscribing. 
helps me out a ton and helps the channel and community within it grow. And check out the links on screen and maybe go check out my channel itself to find more videos you might like. There's a thousand plus videos over there, so if you can't find something else that you also like in addition to this video, I would be very, very much surprised. But as I already said, thanks for watching. As usual, thank you for your time, and take care guys. I will see you in the next video.